So then guys, this is crazy. In the last couple of days, we've had loads of leaks in for the next generations of iPhones. As you can see from this chart here, we have everything for the iPhone 17 and even the next generation iPhone SE. But today, I want to primarily talk about the brand new iPhone 17 Slim. And this is like the newest design iPhone we have had ever since I would say the iPhone 12 kind of generation. And even some people say before even like the iPhone 11. So this is gonna be a big shift up here from Apple in design language what we're going to have for the iPhone 17 and I'm going to talk about the top five changes that are going to change everything with this iPhone and first of all I think it's obvious let's talk about the design so we've been told that Apple are going to be bringing out a brand new slim design for the iPhone 17 slim that's what we're going to call it for the moment and this goes back to Apple's cause of making all their products nice and slim and thin um, going forwards into the next generations of the iPhones because over the last couple of generations the iPhones have got a little bit more thicker and I think Apple just want to reverse that and in fact we actually had an experience of this recently this year with the iPad Pro. The iPad Pro got even slimmer this time round compared to the last few generations and obviously that's because of its brand new design as you can see right here. And this paired with TSMC's brand new kind of socks or whatever you want to call them chipsets and then being even more efficient now as we go into the future this doesn't cause as much heat generating and for this Apple could actually slim down on their design and also like I said because they're even more efficient here this means then the battery life can also be around the same as what we got right now but the main thing is the phone design is going to get slimmer but how much slimmer you may say well we don't actually know the exact kind of measurements at this point but what I would say is probably compared to say the iPhone 16 plus as a good benchmark there because this is in essence the phone that's going to replace we're not going to get an iPhone 17 plus next year as you can see from this chart right here I would probably say we're probably looking between say 10 to 20 percent kind of slimmer design than what we have with say the iPhone 16 plus that comes out this year what's obviously based on the iPhone 15 plus that we have right at the moment so then guys, I don't know about you, but whenever I get a free minute to, I don't know, upload a new video to you guys or things like this, and I like to just have a bit of a time to myself, I like to actually play Matchmasters, what's this really new, great, addictive game, what's great to play when you only have like a few minutes to play an actual game. The game is super simple to get the hang of. All you have to do is match three pieces of the same colour and shape, and then you just have to get more points than your opponents. And the great thing is you get to play people from all over the world. And like I said, it's a great game to play when you have a couple of minutes to spare every day. There's even Diamond Boosters too, will give you extra power-ups and things like this. And it's really, really great to use these to actually beat your opponent. And then like I said, when you actually beat your opponent, you get really addictive to just play another game again, especially with all of the other kind of boosters and things like that. What are really, really awesome inside of this game. And you never know, my next actual opponent to play against might actually be you if you download this game right now. So what are you waiting for? Download the game right now. And as you've seen throughout this whole advert, you might have seen that QR code. So all you have to do is just scan that with the camera on your phone, whether this be Android or iOS, and then you can actually get the game right now and you can play the likes against people like me and other people from all over the world so whatever you do make sure that you download this game right now and all the details and more information about it are in the description of this video too and with that let's return back to the main video but then moving on to the second big change is all to do with the screen technology what's going to be in this iPhone 17 slim so what's most likely going to happen is this new kind of iPhone it's going to be a screen size of 6.65 inches and if you know your iPhone maths already you will know this is just slightly smaller than say the current iPhone sort of 15 plus or the iPhone 15 Pro Max that we have at the moment it's 0.1 of an inch smaller or thereabout because obviously at the moment it's 6.78 this is 6.65 so it's slightly smaller there what we're going to have with that but like I said the screen technology is going to change what you've got to remember this slim phone is not going to be a pro iPhone line it's basically an enhanced version of the iPhone 17 and as you see from this chart here the iPhone 17 is still going to exist 
exist in 2025. And the Slim, like I keep saying, is going to replace the likes of, say, the iPhone 16 Plus, the iPhone 15 Plus kind of range. That Plus series is going to completely go a brand new sort of advanced version of that. But the other difference, though, with this screen is that it's also going to be one of the first iPhones out there to be a non-pro iPhone, but will actually have pro motion display, what is really exciting to see. This has only been exclusive for anything with a pro name next to it. So this slim model is also going to get a pro display, what is absolutely awesome to see. We've been told that the actual display is also far less reflective. It will have a kind of a brand new kind of layer skin over the top of it and a kind of anti-reflexor. So you'll be able to see your screen even more clearer, what is really, really good to see there. But overall, like I said, imagine what you've got with an iPhone sort of 15 Pro Max or say like I said, an iPhone 15 Plus, just slightly smaller there in the actual screen side, but obviously far thinner as we talked about already with the actual design. But next of all, something else that's going to be changing is underneath the hood of the actual iPhone itself. And before we start talking about cameras and everything there, because you'll see how this relates in a minute, it does look like, like I said, that TSMC are actually looking to make a two nanometer process for their SOC going forward, what's going to go inside the likes of, say, the A19 and the A19 Pro. And just in case you're wondering, it does look like it's going to be just a standard A19 inside of his phone. Like I said, again, it is replacing the likes of the iPhone 16 Plus, the 15 Plus, you know, 14 Plus. It's replacing that phone. It is not fully a pro iPhone this phone's going to be. So it's not going to get the pro light kind of chipset inside of it. So it won't get the A19 Pro. That's what we're hearing at the moment, according to Ice Universe from this leak right here. Don't get me wrong, the A19 is still going to be super powerful and it's going to be even faster than probably the likes of say an M2 MacBook Air that we have right now, all in the size of an iPhone. Now you can even see here that obviously with RAM amounts, it's going to be slightly smaller than the Pro line, that it's only going to get eight gigabytes of RAM, still more than enough but you can also do everything with say apple intelligence and all of those great features and like i said before we're going to probably get really good battery life because this chip is nice and efficient it's also far more cooler than the chips that we have right now like in the a17 pro exists in the iphone 15 pro and the iphone 15 pro max so no need to worry there and we've seen evidence of this with tsmc with the likes of say the m4 well, obviously that is made on a three nanometer process but a new version of that and that's keeping nice and cool in a thin design so there was a lot of confidence there that going forwards with this new slim design iphone that we're going to have a fast efficient a19 inside of it paired with eight gigabytes of ram too then next of all let's talk about the biggest change that's the most obvious one on the back of this iphone and that's all to do with the cameras so the cameras are going to be relocated on the back here looking very similar i'd say to the pixel kind of line they're going to be like in a bar going across and this will work with say with spatial vision and you know things like this because obviously they have to have the actual cameras kind of sort of a vertical horizontal line they can't be diagonal so this is really really good here but what i would say with this camera setup up on the back it's either going to be a double or triple like these renders that you can see right here but what I say is it probably won't have the best cameras inside of this phone like I said this phone is all about how it looks and design wise and probably with this it's probably just going to be like something like a dual 48 megapixel camera system on the back so kind of a 48 megapixel ultra wide and 48 megapixel kind of standard wide sort of lens on the rear here very similar to what we're guessing with say the iPhone 16 and the iPhone 16 plus this year where it's going to be a 48 megapixel wide and also 40 megapixel ultra wide too so expect something very similar there but obviously it will be an enhanced version of those so what I'm saying is if you're expecting kind of like a 10 times telephoto zoom this is probably not going to happen there might be like a 12 megapixel one stuck on the back potentially on the back but it probably only got to say a three time zoom or a five time zoom where I say the pro versions of the iPhone 17 next year would have an even better sort of telephoto better zoom capability and the camera lenses in that would be superior to what we're getting here but the main difference is that the design is changing to this bar kind of design and also very likely that the front selfie camera could also be changing and this could be a 24 megapixel camera and finally this might actually be kind of like a pill um, sort of circle design now far smaller dynamic island than we have right now and maybe apple could put the face id under sort of the screen kind of technology hide it away there and that would be really really cool to see but we'll just have to wait and see here as more leaks and rumors come out 
for this iPhone. But then for the price then, well, the good news is Ice Universe has given us a rough idea of what the price is going to be on this iPhone 2. As you can see right here, it's going to cost around about 1,299 US dollars and this would be for the base model. And do remember guys, this would actually effectively be more expensive than the likes of say the iPhone 17 Pro Max would probably actually have more RAM in it, have the A19 Pro inside of it, be more superior in lots and lots of different ways, but it would actually cost a little bit less than the Slim. But though guys, before you start throwing out and going, well, how's that possible? Apple are not going to release, say, the Slim iPhone to be more expensive than the Pro iPhone and then yet have less uh, kind of sort of tech specs inside of it? Well, I hate to say this, Apple have done this in the past. So if you go back many years ago, I'm talking about 15 years, 16 years ago, we used to have the MacBook. This was that plastic white unibody or even before the unibody. And we had also the MacBook Air and we also had the MacBook Pro. And funny enough, the MacBook was obviously the cheapest. It was the plastic white unibody one. And yet that was more powerful than the MacBook Air. Yes, it was cheaper. Then we also had the likes of the MacBook Pro, the 13 inch model. And then that model was well even more powerful than the MacBook and also the MacBook Air. But yet the MacBook Air was more expensive than the base configuration of the MacBook Pro. And that might sound really, really odd to you. But the main thing is the thing is because Apple would promote that the MacBook Air was slim, it was sleek, it had really, really cool kind of design to it, and that you're paying for that kind of thinness and that kind of new design kind of technology that they had just bought out at that time. And I think this is a repeat here where Apple are doing exactly the same with the iPhone 17 Slim. It's going to cost more than a Pro Max, yet still it's not going to have all the best technologies inside of it. But the main trade off is that you're getting that new design, and also at the same time is that you're getting a sort of a slim phone and you know you can show this off that's going to be the main kind of sort of showcase of this phone don't expect it to be the most powerful iPhone out there on launch but like I said things still could change in the future um, with specs and things like this but like I said this has happened in history before with Apple where they've done such a thing like this so just be warned that that could happen if you still want the best iPhone out there it probably will be the iPhone 17 Pro Max but really guys that is everything we have on the new iPhone 17 Slim are you excited about this iPhone? Are you going to be getting your hands on it when it comes out? Or maybe you're going to get a different iPhone then? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And also guys, it's time to wrap up this video. So if you have enjoyed watching it, do press the like button. Also, you want to hear the latest Apple news reviews and comparisons. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and also hit that notification bell too. Until next time guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye bye.